Hello, everyone. I have not been on YouTube in a bajillion years, and apparently they've made it a lot more difficult to try and live stream anything. So I'm giving this a shot. Um, I went to an estate sale today, and a uh, little disappointing, I have to say. It was uh, on estatesales.net, looked like a giant order sale. And it was kind of hoardy, but um, today was the first day, and I arrived around 11.30. It started at 9, so I figured it'd be early enough. I think there was probably a big rush. They did have some really amazing furniture there. Um, but I was going for the clothes as usual. It does look like I got, uh, you know, I, I arrived a little late for that. But I still got some decent stuff. Um, Part of the reason it was a little disappointing is I actually don't have a car currently. And so I had to take a lift, uh, L-Y-F-T, to get there. It was probably about 15 bucks um, each way. Not terrible, not great, but not terrible. And I spent 80 bucks on the stuff that I got while I was there, which wasn't too bad. So I'm gonna start going over some of that for you. Um, it's kind of my new thing, I wanna try to go to this is the second time I've gone to an estate sale that was like crazy big hoardery stuff. The last one I did was uh, really good. I got like three garbage bags full of stuff for 80 bucks. It all smelled terrible, but um, I was able to clean it up really nicely. This thankfully does not smell as bad, but there's still gonna be a lot of cleaning involved. First, I'm gonna do some jewelry because it's sitting right here next to me and I can. So um, this is just a couple of pieces of costume jewelry. Oh, clip on earrings actually, that's all I got. And um, they were really cute. My hands are in terrible condition. I am sorry. Don't look at my hangnails. Um, but these are some earrings that are really cute. These are clip-on earrings. Let's see. You can't really see how awesome they are. Look at that. Sad part is, half the time I get these, I'm like, I'm going to keep all the... I'm not going to keep them. I'm going to want to keep them. And then I'm never going to wear them. Look at that. Very cute. Like those. So they were really pretty. You can't really see the detail of them. They are um, little white petals and little purpley blue rhinestones. So really pretty. I never know how to do this fucking lighting, as you guys know. All right, then these were just kind of cool. Um, these are all clip on earrings, also, by the way. So these are like this weird teardrop shape, and they're kind of an iridescent. Um, bluish, purpley, greeny, very peacock color. So, let's see. Mm -hmm. They're cool. All right, let's see, that's that. Then, these were kind of neat. These are screw back, and they are stuck together, of course, so you can't see what they are until I take them apart. As usual, I've prepared very well. Things have not changed in the eight months since I last did a haul. So those are cute, right? Yeah. So those they're like a goldeny mustardy. And then these guys, these look like these um, flowers that I remember from when I was a kid that would grow on a bush. They were these little like look like little Barbie doll bouquets. Anyway, so these little white flowers with rhinestones also clip on. Lighting is pretty terrible. Let me see. You guys are balanced on the ironing board right now. Let's see if that helps the lighting. That's it. All right, that was the jewelry. Um, everything else just gonna kind of be random stuff. So I also got some scarves, I got some clothes, and a couple of towels, and a curling iron. I think that's it, and a belt. This is a bath mat rug thing. So it's chenille. I always love this kind of stuff. This is a little filthy, but it doesn't look like, it looks like once I wash it, it's gonna be okay. And um, I may sell it. I may keep it. I'm not sure. I like it a lot. Uh, we'll see. I'll wash it. It was cute. Um, all right. Don't leave me sitting on that. This is just, just a little scarf. You got, I assume this is like some kind of hair tie thing that would you would wear exactly like that, obviously. Um, cute. And there was another one that was sort of the same shape as that. I don't know what it was. Here somewhere I'll find it eventually. 
a couple of these I got. Viva Las Vegas is coming up maybe super soon, but these seemed good for that kind of stuff. I admit I partially got some of these scarves because I just was a little disappointed at the outcome and wanted to make sure that I got my money's worth while I was there. Green and white polka dot sheer scarf. These sheer scarves seem to be a thing with the pinup girl crowd. So um, I didn't get any of the ones that were just plain, solid, boring sheer ones. This one's a plain color, solid color, but it's got the cute little scalloped edge, which I like, and it's pink. Pink is always good. Cool. Right. Here is another one that's pink with an even better scalloped edge and a little bit of blocking. So it's cute. This one has a tag too. Cool. I won't show you because it's tiny and it's not that exciting. This one, very pretty. Got a little staining on it down in this corner. But it's nice. I like it. I like the design. It's cool. This is just another funky little fun. This is lime green, which you can't tell because lights. Oh, here's the other scarfy type thing guy. Very um, Lily Vera. Something. I don't think any of these were marked necessarily with anything. Um, I have another handkerchief here that someone is sitting on. Excuse me. This is, I just got because I have a thing for old handkerchiefs. This one's not actually that exciting. And I don't know what happened to it. It looks normal for you, but it looks like there was some color transfer on parts of it. You can't really see it, but that doesn't matter. Um, it was pretty neat. Very weird. Okay. Anyway, part of the reason I got it was because there um, just indicates that it's older. Um, when they don't say made in China. Um, some of the old bandanas can go for a decent amount of money. This, I can't remember what RN number. There's a couple of RN numbers for the bandanas that are pretty common. There's the elephant bandanas that have the elephant on them. And if it has an elephant and made in China, it's so fake. Um, but there's like um, Womcraft is one and I Shalom and Sons or something, but they're they're bandana right between 15, they're around 15 bucks for a normal bandana. This might not go for that much because of the color bleed, but it's, it was a little dark in the house too. So I didn't really notice the color bleed. I don't, I don't know if that's what it's really called. Anyway, moving on. This is a towel for Muriel uh, cigars, beach towel. So I'm going to see if I can do this for you. So Muriel. But look at this. Oh, she's so pretty. Yeah. And then cigars at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was really pretty. I like beach towels. They're fun to sell when they're neat. And this is a really nice size one. There's some beach towels that are um, sort of like a modern day bath towel. This has a tag, Pacific Super Sorb. Not an exciting tag, but the towel is awesome. And I got another beach towel that was interesting. I took two seconds to try and Google information on it and I got nothing useful, but it was still neat. It's Sprite um, and Sprite the soda. It's got, uh, that logo. So it says, you can see Green Panther there, but I couldn't find anything on Google about a Green Panther character for Sprite. Um, I did research and figure out that Sprite was introduced in the US in like the 60s, 50s, something like that. I didn't think it was around till the 80s, but what do I know? So anyway, this is probably an 80s towel. There's info printed on it, you know, along the sides here, but it's completely illegible. Wow, there's dust coming off of this stuff right now. Okay. Um, this is one of the less exciting things. So if you're into vintage t-shirts, um, one of the terms that people like to search by is soft and thin because that's what they like, soft and shirts. You know, as you wash them over time, they get really thin. This is, I don't know if you can see, 
it's very thin. It's just an undershirt. It does not have any tags, but it does have the single seam stitching, which I'm showing you guys. So there's only one row of stitching, not two. Um, but as you can see, this is pretty see through. It's, it, this is like tissue thin. And it really isn't stained. Like it doesn't have pit stains and stuff. So even though it's a plain white t-shirt, probably an undershirt, it's so awesome. Oh, hey, Julie Little Secrets. First of all, A, I can see chat, which is impressive. And B, I did not think anybody would actually join because it's been so long since I went live. But anyway, I got two of these t-shirts. So um, a quick eBay search. I can probably do 15 to 20 bucks for these. I'm not sure if that's where I'll put them, but it was a good little idea. And I haven't tried them on yet, but they, they're so soft. They feel like they'd be really comfortable. So two of those. Um, this is a little 60s blouse that is going to show poorly because the lights and this is neon yellow, but anyway, maybe 50s. I'm very bad. I've learned, but I'm very bad with decades. I can get it within one to two decades usually. So 50s, 60s, 40s, 50s. For some reason, the 30s doesn't exist in my head. Like anything looks 20s or 40s to me, not really ever 30s, but I was saying that this is 60s because of the that collar. So here's the here are the armholes. And then that's like that big boat neck collar, but it's got a side metal zipper, which is more of a 50s thing. Um, there's a great group on Facebook, if you're not aware of it, called I forget what it's called. If I have any idea how to do it, and I remember I will try and link it in comments. But it is like a vent. No group on Facebook that helps with dating. And I know the word Victorian era is in the title, but you can post information, you can post photos and things and people will try to help you um, figure out what the era of the piece is. So I might do that with this. I might not bother, I don't know. Got some cute green stitching on the collar there, no tags. This, um, there was a lot of sewing stuff at this house. So I think a lot of these clothes are handmade, which I think was a pretty normal thing for that era. Um, these are really cute. They need some work, but they're really cute. These are like super tiny shorts. So they don't look as exciting there. They're houndstooth, right? And then they've got a little zipper and button in the back. And they look sort of like booty-ish shorts, booty shorts. The bottom here looks unfinished. So I think that that's, I don't know how that was supposed to go. If it was hemmed under or rolled up, inside is kind of a gross, see that? it's a gross mess. It needs some serious washing. Not in any of the places that you'd be afraid of, you know, needing washing, um, but it's still, you know, got age going on. So I'll have to soak those, but they're really cute. And they're not super tiny. I think they're probably 26, 27 inch waist. So cute though. Um, all right, this is so funny because I saw this giant sweater, which I am surprised. There was a lot of stuff that remained. It looked like there was a lot of good stuff that went very early. So I was kind of surprised to find this because it was in really nice condition. Obviously it's very 80s with these pumpkin shoulder pad things, which are Velcroed in. I don't even know if they come with the sweater. They're Velcroed directly to the sweater. They're hook and looped directly to the sweater because you don't want to Velcro. Anyway, this is Tony Lambert, which I don't know anything about. I feel like I've heard the name Tony Lambert before, but I got in the car, uh, the lift that I had to take because I don't have a car right now. And uh, this stuff was in a bag. And so I was trying to Google it and I'm looking up Tony Llama. And I'm like, why? I can't find any other Tony Llama sweaters. I wonder why that's so weird. Anyway, uh, how do I hold this up? Here are the shoulders. All right, so that's just, it's a cardigan and it's got this awesome business going on. It's so cool, I love this shit. The back is plain, which always makes me sad. Um, but it's really cool, it's wool, it's in nice shape. A lot of this stuff there wasn't necessarily in bad shape. There wasn't a lot of moth damage or anything, but stuff is just dirty, like it had like 50 years of dust on it. It's probably exactly what it was. Anyway, so this is cool. Um, also, 
perfect time of year to get sweaters, but it is what it is. Another one of those t-shirts. All right. There's not really a whole lot left in here, by the way, but there is some good stuff. I always try to save the really good stuff for last. Um, this is just a belt that was cool. It's kind of tied in knots, but the metal belt. Little, uh, what is it? Okay, very cool. It's all knotted up right now, but it's okay. I don't know, I like neat belts and I don't find them too often. But actually at the last estate sale, I got like three chain type of belts, which was really cool. And I like them enough that I want to keep them, but I don't really ever wear them, so it doesn't make much sense. Um, but anyway, whatever. I don't need to untie that in front of you. You guys know how to untie things. Don't want to watch me do it. All right. I got a few pairs of these pants, and uh, they seem to be wool, and they are very dirty, but they're very cute. They are just those sort of 50s. 80s, 60s, I don't know, little capri, not capri necessarily, cigarette pants. They're slim ankle, high waist, um, a little wider in the hips. They've got the side metal zipper. This particular pair was taken in funky, but I'll be able to unstitch that. Um, these are lined, which is nice, but I do think that they're wool. They feel like wool. There's no tags. So I don't know if they're homemade, handmade, because they're impressively done but I'm, I don't know I can't sell so um but there's no tags so anyway, I'm probably going to have to get them dry cleaned which is going to make me a little bit sad because I just dropped off like $80 worth of stuff at the dry cleaner that was ready to pick up today didn't get it those are full burgundy I got a few of those oh that'll save for a minute because that's really cute I forgot about that already navy blue ones and again an unfortunate time of year because it's starting people are shopping for warmer stuff now but these are still cute I don't see these types of things very often so I do like stuff that's a little bit more embellished than these are but I love the silhouette of these and I don't come across them so very often at all so I was happy to get them um these are brown ones these were particularly dusty they're all pretty much the same thing yeah, they might even be, I mean, they're the same thing, like lined with the same type of fabric and everything. They had a neat pair of stirrup pants for any of you who are a little up there in the age range uh, with me. I don't know that they were 80s stirrup pants, but I don't know if stirrup pants were a thing before the 80s. I think that they were functionally a thing, like maybe for horseback riding, but I don't know what horseback riding clothes look like, so... I didn't get them because they were sort of a stretchy material, but they had very bad pilling, and I just didn't want to deal with it, honestly. Um, all right, these I got two of, and this is very opposite aesthetic of what I've been showing you so far, but these are very popular and do well right now. These are some coveralls, and uh, they're kind of a mess, but that's okay because this is the kind of thing where kind of a mess is, is fine. So they are legit old. I'm not sure how old yet. Most of the stuff in the house that I saw, the clothing was um, mostly 60s. Um, there was some stuff that was a little bit older, but I didn't look at that stuff too much because what is happening here? I, this is like got all sorts of Velcro business going on the new business going on um and look at some of the more current stuff because it was boring current stuff it was like it was like boring current stuff not good not current but like 80s but it was cool so i think this is older than that um but i am not sure just based on the location of the house but these coveralls are a little bit different than anything i've seen before they've got this this ribbing here and that's kind of a waste it looks like they Velcro up the front. Um, <laughs> Velcro, I'm trying to put it back together so that I can show you what it looks like. Not going very well. I don't know if this was like original to the, there we go. Okay, good enough. So coveralls, and it's got that ribbing in the center. I don't know what 
is happening here. I think that there's a belt that holds it. I don't know. Anyway, so they're they're pretty cool. Um, these have this tag here that you probably can't read. And they say, coveralls, utility, nuclear submarine. Contract number, blah, 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 large, long. So they seem to be military. There are, I'm going to see if I can show you guys, military clothing with these tags. They often have these, I think they're called requisition numbers. Uh, okay. Again, bad. so see that like 8412 number? They often have things like that, and those numbers can help you narrow down the time period. Um, I came across a few things recently that were 40s and then 60s or 70s military. And it they, sometimes it'll come up on some like weird, obscure message board website from like 10 years ago. But people will put up like a list of the different requisition numbers and what dates they correspond to as far as when the uniforms were ordered. Um, so these are a poly cotton blend, so they're a little bit later, but anyway, jumpsuits, coveralls are really popular, obviously with a different fashion crowd than the pinup crowd, but, um, they're grungy and grimy and a little jacked. And I think that all of those things will work in favor of them selling. I sold another jumpsuit, I sold a couple for around the $40 range and they weren't super amazing. I think that this will probably still go for about that because it's amazing, but not, you know, not in the way that would command like 80 or hundred bucks, I don't think. Um, this is so weird with the knit. This is just the other one. And in the back, it's got these, you see those sort of ribbed panels. I have to figure this out. Anyway, that's those. And they're a bigger size, which is cool. It might only have two things left here. I do. That's so sad. Okay. This is a really pretty skirt that, um, I love that. So it's just a slim skirt, not pencil, but straight, I guess. But I really like uh, the color is great, obviously, but the pockets were adorable. So that also still no tags, I don't think. Hmm. Anyway, that, and then this, oh no, there is one in here. So I got this curling iron, which I just kind of got on a whim. It wasn't too bad. Um, there you go, electric curl. Valmore. So anyway, the box, obviously dreamy, but it's pink, which you can't see because the lighting is terrible, but it's pink. And uh, it's got all these little, I haven't really examined it yet. So this is the first time I just, huh, I guess to make the barrels different sizes. I don't know how it works yet, but it's so cool. Wow. Look at that thing. It's just so freaking cool. Look at, I love these kind of details. You know, you've got the old cord, that thingy. Oh, cool. And so you can change the barrel sizes. Oh, this is interesting. It's got um, whatever foamy crap in here. It's supposed to be soft, but it's just falling apart. But anyway, very cool. It has a very large, but three different barrel sizes. It's just so neat. I don't know that it'll sell for a whole lot online, um, but the, uh, everything that I got today cost $80 total plus the $30 in car fare. So $110. Um, I think I'll easily make my money back. Uh, but this they called $5. So totally cool. All right. Now for the last thing. This is a coat. This is a really, I don't like doing coats so much especially if they need work because it intimidates me as far as being able to like wash them properly or whatever. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. The curling iron, um, finding it in good condition and in the box. Yes. And um, that was cool. So 
Uh, I don't know what that does. I did a really quick search on Etsy for curling irons and mostly what they had were like the super old ones that look like two pieces of iron that you hold in a flame to, you know. Um, but, you know, listen, I didn't do much research yet. So, but it was just really adorable. All right, so now I have this coat. I don't know that this is going to, let's see. So, all right. First of all, I buttoned it wrong. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Whatever. Let's see. It is a swingy style silhouette. Swingy coat. There's the collar. The collar's cute when it sits properly. I had the benefit of seeing it on a hanger, at least. There we go. Now, the <coughs> fabric is like a blue and black slubby kind of texture which I liked, um, fully lined. The sleeves, I didn't know what was going on. They were pinned in this weird way when I saw it. So I unpinned one to see what it looks like. And I still don't know totally how it goes yet. But it's a big sleeve. This is like sort of a wire piping in the cuff. So my guess is that we button it and then roll it up and it's just a very wide buttoned cuff. Um, which looks kind of cool. I think it's missing a button, but that's, it is, and I still can't button things. I was functional when I woke up this morning, mostly. Let's see. I have not seen what this looks like yet, buttoned up and cuffed properly, not safety pinned in some bizarre way. I don't know, it doesn't seem like it would stay up on its own, but that's sort of what it would look like. But it seems like it's gonna unroll itself. So I don't know, I have to see how that's gonna work, but it's cool. Wow, it actually looks like it rolls up quite a bit. Depending, I guess, on how long your arms are. I don't know. Wow, that's probably a little bit too much. Okay. Anyway, it's pretty. I have to figure out how to wash this. I do not know what it's made out of. It doesn't really feel like wool. Um, here's the tag. Lady Hampton. Yeah, and it just says um, all weather fashions insulated fabric. I can try and do that burn test thing. I, I'm not good at that. I can't really tell. It never helps me because I don't know what... <laughs> what the differences are between one result and the other. I know that if it like melts into something hard, it's probably polyester or nylon, but if it um, sort of turns into ash, it's a natural fiber, but beyond that, I don't really know. So anyway, so that is my little haul. It was a little bit disappointing. There was nothing in this that really like was earth shattering for me. Um, it does look like somebody pilfered away all of the good vintage lingerie before I got there. That was very sad. There were some slips and things, but they were all, you know, had some sort of issues going on. But um, I kind of did feel, well, I said that already, I think, obligated to buy stuff to justify the cost of the car ride, which is sort of silly. But I didn't get so much that it overwhelms me. And uh, everything I got, I will be able to sell for some kind of profit. And I did. I was proud of myself. I actually sat at the estate sale and went through all of this stuff before I checked out and sort of tallied up in my mind what the low end is of what I thought I could get for these items just to make sure that when they quoted me a purchase price, I was able to sort of make sure that I was making a profit. And that's pretty thought out for me. I am usually much more impulse driven than that. So that is everything. Um, I hope that this was an enjoyable mini haul. I say mini, there's probably not really that many, but it feels like it was. Oh, looking for the earrings. I put them on the table. For you. Um, I hope to be able to get back to doing more of these, but I always say that every time and then I don't do it. But I've been, uh, my house has been like a, an inventory warehouse and it's been out of control and I'm actually starting to see some progress. And so I 
and actually have a space where I can sit down and show you stuff without being mortified at what you're seeing behind me. So um, maybe I'll be able to do more of these. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for joining. Thank you, especially Julie Little Secrets for joining me live. That was a nice surprise for me. And uh, I hope to see you guys again soon. Mm-hmm.